Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, wherever you are. Maybe it's even good evening, but we're glad to have you back for another episode of Encounter with God Together, the first of 2021. And welcome. We have Whitney Cunningham, President Emeritus, uh, with us. And Whitney, how how are you? You brought a wonderful message to us in 2020 about the Bible being our source of vision. And uh, I think we can carry that into 2021. Yeah, well, it's great to be back. Great to see you again, Gail. And uh, yeah, I've enjoyed uh, just staying connected to the SU family and and uh, just, you know, I never actually left the SU family, but it's good to have uh, greater involvement. And so, yeah, I, I uh, enjoyed being part of the uh, virtual event there at the end of the year. And um, I'm looking forward to a new year of Encounter with God together. And uh, yeah. it's kind of an exciting thing. Yeah, and I think, you know, we all have a lot of hopes and dreams for what this new year will bring and uh, probably some resolutions uh, to encounter God's word afresh and um, more faithfully, maybe. And so hopefully this will be the beginning of helping you uh, in those commitments that you've made. Have you made any resolutions, Whitney? I don't mean to put you on the spot. Well, you know, one of the things that um, I'm I'm doing is just uh, and I, I reference this a little bit, but, um, I, you know, like the traditional thing is I'm going to, you know, eat less and exercise more or something like that. But one thing that I've been experimenting with is reading God's word out loud. And I, I talked about that uh, in, in the virtual event, but I've just really uh, realized how important it is to hear what's true, to hear what's true. And uh, not just, you know, as as uh, Encounter with God and SU, uh, you know, Bible readers, it's a very internal, a very uh, individualistic experience. But somehow speaking the word out loud um, makes it even more communal with God and, and uh, when you hear it. So um, I don't know if that's a resolution or not, but that's something I've been uh, experimenting with more and more in this uh, sort of pandemic environment. That's, you know, the first time you said that, I thought it was a great idea. And I think I might, uh, I might uh, tag along on your effort and do some of that with my family uh, starting out the new year. It's, it's a good tee into this week's readings because um, we're, we're into First John and First John uh, addresses the truth a lot, walking in the truth uh, listen to the truth. So, so as you talk about hearing God's word and the truth of it uh, out loud, I think that's a good a good segue. Uh, and you've been you've been meditating a little bit in in advance of this week's reading. So, I'm going to toss it over to you to uh, maybe give us some ideas of what's coming up or tee up tee up the week. Sure. Well, thank you. And you know, I think First John is a perfect way to start a, a new year in God's word. And, and the reason I think that is because I think 1 John is, it's either one of the most or the most unique uh, of the epistles. It's got a different mm -hmm. writing style. It's got a fresh approach. And, and I think it's, it's perfect because it'll give us a fresh approach to our own Bible reading um, in the new year. So what I'd like to do, Gail, if it's okay, is sure. I, I, I'd just like to do some 1 John... FAQs. You know what FAQs are, right? Frequently asked questions, right? Right. Frequently asked questions. And it's kind of a good way to unpack uh, the meaning of something. So if you don't mind, what I'd like to do is uh, just a few First John FAQs as a way to whet our appetite for what's going to come uh, in this week. So that sounds great. So what's your first question? Okay. Well, the first question is, it's really basic. Uh, it's who wrote this letter? Who wrote this letter? Now, I know you'd say, well, on the, you know, the title, it's from the, you know, the name of the book, it's John, it's the Apostle John. And there's a little bit of debate among the, you know, the scholars about, you know, is there another alternative? But the vast majority of scholars and the traditional view is that it's the Apostle John, the same person that wrote the Gospel of John, Revelation. And, you know, even as lay people, when you read this, uh, as an encounter with God reader, and you read through First John, you can come to that own conclusion, your own conclusion on that, just by the writing and the thought form. Mm. So, if you take, for example, uh, the beginning of the Gospel of John, 
And, um, you know, the, the other, the three other gospels are very straightforward. You know, here's the facts. I'm going to, I'm going to lay it out for you. But the gospel of John starts with a totally different thought form. It says the, the famous verse in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. If I wrote a gospel account, I wouldn't start that way. It's just a very unique uh, way of thinking. And then if you look at first John, Okay, it starts out, you know, like the letters of Paul. He says, okay, this is a letter from Paul, and I'm writing to you, the church in Philippi or wherever. It's very straightforward. That's not how this starts. Um, in First John, it starts, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. So it's that same unique thought form that we yeah. begin the gospel of John and the epistle. So I think because of that, we can, even as lay people, we conclude, yes, it was the apostle John. So the second FAQ, second question I'd like to ask is, well, why was this letter written? Why did John write it? And mm. basically, you know, the basic answer is to respond to heresy. And uh, the unique element is it probably was people who had originally been part of the church, they broke off and they had this sort of heretical view of the faith. And uh, we see that in uh, our first reading this week in John, 1 John 2, 19, where it says, they went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. And mm. so it was kind of a splinter group and, and, and they went off and they had this heretical teaching. And, and what was the bottom line of the heresy? Well, they denied the incarnation. They denied that Jesus came in bodily form, that he died, that he rose again, and they drifted into immorality. And we see this, that same sort of issue going on throughout the New Testament and a lot of the different churches. And you know what? We see that same pattern today. So whenever anyone disconnects from Jesus, the cornerstone, Mm. You end up drifting into heresy and unfortunately immorality. It's nothing new. It's happened before. And so that's why uh, 1 John, I think, is really uh, not only unique, but it's really relevant for us today. Yeah. And the last FAQ I'd like to offer is, well, what was the message then? What, 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 did, what did the Apostle John say? And there's really two, well, there's lots of ideas in here, but two big ideas uh, that you'll see in the readings this week. One is Jesus, obviously, and the other is love. Jesus and love, the two big ideas here. And probably the key verse in, in 1 John, or the key verse that captures those two big ideas, come. Well, you'll run into it in our, in our readings on Wednesday, which, by the way, is Epiphany, the day that we remember uh, the coming of the wise men and, and the, really the the manifestation of Jesus, the Savior of the world, to the Gentiles, to the non-Jewish people. So on, on that unique and special day, our readings will take us um, to this verse, which I think summarizes uh, the sort of the big ideas in this letter. It's 1 John chapter 3, verse uh, 23, and it says, And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. So it brings together that theme of Jesus and love into one uh, verse. So that's really the message uh, you know, of this letter. Now, Gail, there's one more thing, and I, I hope you'll indulge me on this. I wanna, <laughs> I wanna add kind of a personal FAQ. So those are kind of your Bible FAQs. Now, the, the last question I'd like to just to add to my list is, why do I, why does Whitney love John? <laughs> and I want to answer that question. And it, the, the answer is because it's so quotable. Mm. So yeah, it's a different thought form. It's a different way of writing a letter. It's, you know, but if you, when you read this week, you're going to find some of the greatest hits quotes <laughs> in the New Testament in the <laughs> book. And I love it because of that. And it reminds me when I was young, I was in, uh, I was a member of something called the Bible Memory Association. Oh, so wow. The old BMA. <laughs> and, uh, what that involved is uh, basically I was sort of pressured into memorizing Bible verses 
to get cheesy little prizes like a pencil <laughs> with a Bible verse on it or, you know, stuff like that. And um, I didn't take it too seriously, but I did it. I got the pencil and I got the, you know, the little prizes and stuff. And I put it out of my mind. Well, now I realize God's word is hidden in my That's heart. Right. Even because of that, even though I didn't quite take it seriously. And so when I read through First John, that what I hid in my heart all those years ago comes back. It, it comes alive in me. Just one example of one of these greatest hits uh, verses, uh, one that I'm sure we could all quote. I'm sure that we've all um, latched onto when we've had a time of failing in mm. our own lives. And it's uh, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And you know what? That's just, uh, that's a greatest hits promise that we need to hide in our hearts. Yes. That's what we're going to experience when we go through this really unique letter, this unique epistle from uh, the Apostle John. So I'm looking forward to it. And yeah. I hope everybody else, uh, it, I hope it becomes a really fresh new start for our Bible reading in the new year. Oh, that's great. I love it. And uh, I liked your story, Whitney. That was great. So um, I think I have some takeaways from, from your word here, and I hope that, that our audience does too. And uh, I'm going to be looking for those greatest hits that, that maybe I hid away somewhere along the way and uh, looking for those themes. So, yep, I'm looking forward to this new year and uh, looking for good things ahead. And Whitney, I'm sure we're going to see you over the course of this year. And I'm so uh, happy you were able to start us off. Yeah, well, it was fun. I always enjoy it. Love being in God's word. Love talking with you, Gail. Thank you so much. Actually, I wonder if you would pray, um, pray us out and pray us into the, into the year. Sure, I'd be happy to. Okay. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word stands eternal. We thank you, Lord, that when we stand on the solid rock, of your word, we can stand firm and secure in a changeable and uncertain world. Lord, I thank you that we get to begin this year, this new year with you in your word, reading uh, First John. I pray, Lord, that you would make it come alive to each and every reader, and uh, Lord, that you would guide us and direct us as a Scripture Union community um, in our lives and in our, in our future this year. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And best wishes to you and your family for the new year. And looking forward to seeing you some more, Whitney. Same to you, Gail. See you okay. again. Have a good week, everyone.